now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the data we are going to take you through is uh, some HIV samples. So this will really give you a feel of what are the features that are there in this analysis software and then we'll demonstrate it with the H pylori data which mm -hmm. at some point is what you're going to start looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So what we do is yep yeah, so Shay is going to control the mouse and uh, take you through the new project. So what if you have sequencing data that's how you start to so go to the new project. Mm -hmm. And then we choose the reference sequence or which organism that we are going to uh, do the analysis. So here we've got some. Yeah. And we're going to choose the HIV one at the moment. Mm -hmm. So HIV. And then you load the reference sequence. So there's a reference sequence. Uh, is it come with the program or you have to download it by yourself? Well, you have both the options. Normally it comes with the program, but you do have an option to download. Yes. Yeah, and there is, is a way to download the reference sequence using GenBank. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have a GenBank sequence, you can go on to the GenBank. Can you see it? Is it too slow yeah. or is it you can see it? I can see it. I drew my laptop here. It's a small, but okay. So you yeah. can put the session number in here, mm -hmm. load it, or you can download the flat file from GenBank, select flat file, and load it that way. Okay. If you are going to download it from the web using the session number, uh, mm -hmm. it's usually okay with quite big files, but if uh, something like H, uh, Pylori, which is 2 million bases, you're probably mm -hmm. better downloading the fast, uh, fast file off GenBank mm -hmm. and uploading it locally. Otherwise, it tries to load all the data off the web and it takes a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, is that clear? So either clear. you can choose the one which is already in the database or you can get it through GenBank using the accession mm -hmm. number. Okay. Or flat file. Go. Okay, so once that's done, the loading, you load the reference. Yeah, yeah. So this is the screen that comes up. So you see on the top right, you've got a track bar to make it bigger, smaller. Mm -hmm. So you can zoom in and zoom out. So you're pulling the IBs three times. So is it smooth in there or is it taking time for you to load it there? Uh, uh, take, a, take a little bit of time, but I can see it. Okay. So I have upper, upper panel and a down panel, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what you have on the blue, these are the genes. And you see the icon on the top right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you click on there, you get a grid with all the features. So are you aware of these terms, Andrew, or these are new to you? You mean the term? Yeah. So you've got a list of feature types, genes, coding sequences, mature peptides. I don't know what is a mature peptide. Signal peptides. That's uh, some HIV. It, it's just the way it's been annotated. Yeah, it's so different power. annotations for different sequences. Okay. Yeah, I do see the ENV here. That's the envelope, right? Yeah. Envelope, envelope protein, gagger. I forgot the gagger it is. GAG. So you've got the genes. You've got the. Uh, POL is a polymerase, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Tech okay. is another transcription factor. Yeah. Yeah. So you see the panel with the blue? These mm -hmm. are the genes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The ones above it at present are the coding sequences. Okay. That's, That's a reference, reference sequence. The, the, the yellow ones, the yellow bar. Okay. 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 And we call this the feature focus panel. So you see, select feature focus drop down. Mm -hmm. If you look in there, you can see all the different types of feature types available apart from the gene, because the gene always stays in the blue gene panel, the blue okay. bars. So you can select mature peptide, mm -hmm. and then the mature peptides become the feature focus. You can see it's changed from what it was earlier. So with instead of coding sequence, now she has chosen the mature peptide, and it's got different feature on top. So it's got more specialized feature focus as compared to what it was for the coding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can go back to the coding sequences. It puts the coding sequences in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you click on, you've got the feature locations on the right. If you click on these, it will take you to it, to that location. Okay. Okay. If you click on the gene, it highlights the gene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but, but so far, you only load a reference sequence, right? Yes. That's right. So we're just taking you through the reference sequence. Oh, reference sequence. Okay. But why you have a two layers then? The yellow one and the red one. Yellow one is the reference. What is the red one for? Okay, the, the bottom one, the blue ones. Uh -huh, the blue one, yeah. They're the genes within the reference sequence. The genes. How about the yellow one? About the yellow ones at present are the coding sequences. You know, a sequence, a string of DNA could have all these different things. So one is just the genes, and there's the uh, the regulatory region, there's upstream, untranslated region, and all those different things. Mm -hmm. And the top one basically gives you the features of all the genes. So in HIV, they're pretty much the same, but you know, other references may have a lot more intronic sequences or in uh, uncoded sequences there. Between the two oh, untranslated so, regions. So, the, this is okay, the, so the, the top one is more more extensive, detailed. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so the, 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 the lower one is uh, for the gene only. That's right. Yes. It's more of the genomic gene region. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is just the genes. Mm -hmm. The blue one is just the genes. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the position okay. here is a nucleotide based pair position, or is a that's right, protein. it's nucleotide-based pair nucleotide. protein. Yes, within the full genome. So if we move to the end. Okay, if we select one of the, one of the genes, you see it turns mm -hmm. red? Yeah. That, that occurs when we click once on there. And you see on the top, the red, this top bar represents the full genome. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, the red bit is what you're actually seeing on the screen at present. So if we move it, you see how the red moves. If we select another one, that's mm -hmm. Paul. If we select tap, this is a spliced coding sequence or product protein, and it's spliced over two areas. Okay. If, if we double click one of these, 
it becomes green. And we actually go into the feature itself. So what you're seeing below is the nucleotide sequence and the protein sequence for the actual platat. Oh, okay. So as we move along, you see we're actually in TAT now. And if yep. you move over the sequence and right click, can you see where it says scale display options? Yeah, the scale in the, in the lower, in the bottom panel. So we can actually look at the feature nucleotide positions, the genome positions, or the amino acid positions. Mm -hmm. If we click on the nucleotide positions, this is the actual nucleotide position for TAP. Mm. And you can go back to the genomic position then. So you see how we're moving along TAP. Yep. And this bar is where we actually are, the red bit. Mm -hmm. So we're in the first splice. And we're coming along the red bar is the end of the first splice of TAP. Mm -hmm. You see the red bar, the red line? Yeah. Okay, and as we go past that, we now jump into the second splice of TAP. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's coming from here. And yeah, so this is up here at this position. The first splice is here. Okay. The second bar down is where you actually are within TAP. So the top line at the top represents the full genome from position 1 to 9719. Mm -hmm. And the second bar down represents the feature that you're in, so TAP, which is 306 or whatever long. And the blue lines represent where you are within the genome or the feature. Okay. If we double click within this area, it'll take us back into the, back into the genome. Okay. Okay, and you see the track bar on the right side here. This allows you to zoom in and out of the actual. Yeah, zoom in and out. Okay. So when you're at one hundred percent, one pixel represents one base nucleotide base. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. When you are on top of any of the genes or the features, if you right click, you've got options to copy DNA <coughs> sequences or the nucleotide, se uh, nucleotide sequence, the protein sequence, and it copies it into your clipboard so you can just paste it as faster format on into Notepad or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. And same with the actual reference sequence down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also translate and look at the amino acids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now if we go up to the top left, to the file menu, we've got an option saying import sequences. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So if we click on there, the box appears with all the different uh, load, loading options. Yeah. So we can load align faster files, multiple sequence align faster files. Uh, the pairwise will do an alignment itself, just using a pairwise alignment. You've got the GAT, the ACE files, the SAM and the BAM files. So these bottom four are usually the next gen yeah. GAT files. Mm -hmm. So if you select BAM, 
you've got the options at the bottom. Uh, you can include the assembly read information, so each next-gen read. Mm -hmm. uh, you can include the bits which have been trimmed off the end within the alignment. So these are represented in lowercase uh, nucleotides within the application. Mm -hmm. You can inclu include the base quality scores. Okay. So if we include these, and the reference trim is the trim at the beginning uh, for the okay. sequence. So we've used a HIV alignment with a 601 trim. So this is with your reference sequence. So if, you know, the HIV reference sequence is 9,600 base pair long. The reference sequence which we use to align our data is chopped off by 601 base pair, so we use 9,100 base pair long reference sequence. Yeah. So okay. that's why we account for that 601. Yeah. Shade 10, isn't it? I think we have them in there. I have them in the uh, AAAD applications. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Yeah. I can't use that little mouse to scroll. Okay, so these are some BAM files we have. Okay, so can you see the loaded sequences? Yeah. yeah. These have come from one... So these have come from an alignment software which we use. So we use the CLC Bio as our alignment software. So once mm -hmm. we get the data from our sequencer, we use an alignment software, align the reads, and save the alignment file as a BAM file. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets imported into the VGAS now. Okay. So, so what is the, the number in the, in the left side? One, two, three. Okay, they, these are just uh, identified we've put on there. So it's just not uh -huh. I think at some point we're going to put a different identifier on, but at present we've just got a number. So it's a different sample? Sorry? So it's a one, two, three is a sample from the uh, different sample? No. It's all the same sample, isn't it? Yeah, they're all the same, same sample. sample, it's just different reads. Oh, different reads, oh, okay. That's right. So if uh, you see the tooltip, which says this sample is 63664. Mm -hmm. And the actual read we all you can see at the bottom. So you can see the read name that is. So this this is four five four flex data. So that's how the reads are numbered or named. So you can look at the read name just by hovering over it. So it's been assembled sort of into a best fit and placed in rows. So each row contains uh, multiple reads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as you move over, you can see the quality score as well. The dashes represent the deletions with respect to the reference. Okay. And the insertion, the plus sign. Okay. The plus sign represents the insertion at that position. Okay. okay. So you can see the insertion T at that position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Between the C and the A, yeah. Yeah. So you, you can move up and down the sequences using the scroll bar on the right. 
Okay. If you double click on one of the genes, so if we double click on GAG, it takes us into the GAG sequences. So it only shows all the reads which cover the GAG region. Oh, I see. If the reads don't have it, they don't show it. Yeah, so these are the GAG reads. So these are all the reads which cover the GAG gene. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, you've got options, right click, you've got all the copy and copy options which copy the sequences in different format uh, within to your clipboard. Mm -hmm. You've got view con uh, sequence translation, you see that? Yeah. So you can show the mean acids below. Yeah. Yeah. The one I like it in blue is the actual frame it's on. So if you've got frame shifts in there, it's going to jump. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got conservation, so you can view nucleotide conservation or mean acid conservation. If you click one of them, then it shows the conservation against the reference. So anything where you have a dot, it matches the reference sequence. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you single click on one of the sequences, it selects that sequence. And then the conservation is against the actual sequence you've selected. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. You can also do amino acid conservation. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you Okay. Uh, we'll for sure the next, maybe. Yeah. Quality or quality. So yeah, quality score. Okay. So now if you're interested in looking at how good your data is or, or what the quality of your data is. You, you, can, you can also hide these features at the top. So you can either do it through these options here. Yeah. Or do view at the top. Okay. So you can hide feature focus panel, genome map. So we're just viewing the actual genes at the moment. You could hide genes. So you just say if you want more screen space for the sequences. So now you can see if this was on a really big screen, you can have all the information spread across mm -hmm. the whole big screen and much more clearer. Okay, so you see the icons on the bottom right? Yeah, yeah. just tour bar or something? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the first, the number is just to go to that position if you want to navigate to a position. The search, this is a search icon which hasn't been implemented yet. The third one is a quality score. Mm -hmm. So if we click on the third one, it brings up a little form with options. So this shows us the quality information. So the maximum quality score we have is 40, the minimum is 7. Mm -hmm. and that's between a range of 50 and 0. So if we actually click display quality score values, we no longer see the nucleotides. We see blocks representing the quality. So, so black is the highest. Uh, so on the black to the white, the black is the poor quality, the white is the poor one. Okay. I see. If we click white to black, white's weaker, black's stronger. 
you've mm -hmm. got to show base colour so you can actually put a little square in the middle to show you what base you're looking at and you've got white to the base colour the heat map's not implemented yet but as you move around you can just it just gives you an idea of the quality of the area okay so anything if you move over here on the tooltips if you look at something which is black you've got a lower score and as we move to the highest scores they go up so you can see this white one's got a score of 38 <laughs> and the black ones have got a score that one is 11 so it's 11, 11. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so you remember in i'm not sure how familiar you are with the flex data or 454 data the quality scores are not as similar represented as Sanger sequence data. Quality score there change if it's a homopolymer region, the quality scores drop off depending on you know whether it's the third base or the fourth base of a homopolymer nucleotide. So you have to take that into account. So if you look at a lot of black data or look at a lot of white, depends on what you're choosing. It does not necessarily mean that you've got very poor data. You just need to be aware that there is a possibility, especially if you look at this, that there's a lot of homopolymer sequences. So anywhere where the stretch of nucleotides, the same nucleotide here, there's likelihood that the quality score will drop off there. Okay. okay. So if you, for example, if you're looking at the A here and if you had looked at the quality score in this region, you'll see there are a lot of blacks there. That's because they're homopolymer region there. So all A's together or all T's together. So you know, that's why you see this uh, quality score dropping off. So you just have to be aware that if you're seeing blacks, that not necessarily it is because of poor quality of the sequence data, but it could be that it's a homopolymer region. Mm -hmm. So you just need to be aware it's not similar to the one that you see in Sanger sequence data. The quality score actually tells you the quality of that particular base. Okay? Okay, okay. so it's about compilation something. Sorry? I mean, the quality indicator compilation, the sequence information plus the sequence quality, is that right? That's right, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, mm. yes. Okay, so that's the third icon, quality scores. Okay, the, the last one is the consensus coverage. If you click on there, we get this form, okay. Um, so normally for next generation data, you want to do no grouping and group by next gen. So you want to collect all the reads for a single sample. You're not interested in, you know, this no grouping is good if you're looking at Sanger sequence data yeah. and you want to look at individual sample individually. So what, yeah, so if you, you click no grouping and group by next, neither of them, you see all the reads for that single sample. sample. Mm -hmm. But if you group by next gen, it groups them together. So that okay. includes all the reads. And then if you highlight that, click on plus, it copies it and crosses the group. Mm -hmm. Within here, you can add one or more groups, you can mix groups. Yeah, so this is useful when you want to do comparison. So if you've got sequence data from two different patients or two different samples and you want to look at the comparison between the two, then this is a really good tool to do the comparison. We've done that with Edge Pylori data, yeah. Let me show you that. Yeah. Okay, so you can... So can, can you... Can you assemble all this uh, reads file into one consensus context? 
Yes, so yes. you'll see that. So this is the tool that you would require to generate a consensus yeah. sequence. So if we don't, you, you, call it, you call it contiger, right? Yeah, a contiger consensus, yes. Oh, consensus, okay. Yes. So if we have loaded more than one sample in, we would see the list of all the samples assembled here. But mm -hmm. because we've only loaded one sample in, we're just seeing the one. I, I know, it's a one group here. Yeah. One group, one, so one consensus. Yeah. select three or four and make one group of four samples and create one consensus out of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You set a cutoff here so you can, there's three options for the cutoff. Base count is just taking the base count, but if you're using next gen or if you use the read at the end, and we can set what percentage? So normally, you know, for next gen data, you would want to set, depending on the number of reads, you can set a cutoff. Our standard is about 5%. So if we set our cutoff of 5%, yeah. then it will generate a contig sequence or a consensus sequence based on 5% cutoff. Okay. So you can choose depending on what kind of a data you know, If you've got 10,000 reads or 50,000 reads, then you can set a cutoff at 1%. But if you've got only 10 reads, it's more of what's the confidence level that you want in what you're getting is accurate. So you can set up the cutoff depending on what you're looking at. Yeah. And you, you can include the best quality score. Mm -hmm. We're going to add more features regarding the, uh, with this, but at present. Yeah. Okay, so you click update. Mm -hmm. You only need to click update if you're changing the group or the cutoff. And you see at the bottom, we've now got a consensus. And all we're actually showing is the nucleotide consensus. So the top one's the actual consensus, and then they're ordered by uh, occurrence. So if we click on nucleotide coverage count, we get the actual count underneath of that base. Okay. Yeah. So position the position we're on we've got 1501 A's mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah so this one is removed any base which is less than five percent would have been removed from this consensus sequence okay so my question is just consensus sequence and there's a read number per base can yeah. be saved or copied oh. yes 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 okay yeah, so that's where the copy will be coming up, yeah. You've got copy options there. Okay. And you can export all this information using this button to Excel. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you, so including the base pair and the read number. That's right. Yeah. That's right, okay, good. So you can also view it as a percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can show information information, in, insertion, insertion. Inf sorry, insertion information. So you see the green lines, these are where insertions occur, oh, and the okay. tooltip tells you the insertion and the occurrence. You see that? Yeah, insertion A, right? Yeah, 95 times. So if, if there's more than one insertion, it'll tell you. And this is also a cutoff using the uh, cutoff as well. Then mm -hmm. you've got the amino acids. If you want to look at the amino acid coverage, you can't. You can't do these kinds of things. Uh, no, not in this one. We'll show you the highlight group differences when we go to the H pylori where we're comparing two different samples. The nucleotide coverage plot, which you can scale in and out of, just shows you the colours and the count. So they're stacked on top of each other. And the colours represent the nucleotide base. Mm -hmm. So as you move along, you can actually see the position, 
and the percentage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this, uh, can you export the coverage? So this is sort of a coverage plot. You know, if you want to look at what uh, what's the percentage of the region that I'm interested in is got covered, yeah. you can plot that graph and have that as an image. No. Any, anything on the bottom, oh, actually, so you see this navigation report as well, mm -hmm. we click on there, we get a report, and this is the SMV or the SNP report, mm -hmm. we've got the base position, the reference position, and the actual nucleotide at that position, the count, the coverage, and the quality scores. So we've got the max, the minimum, and the average quality score. Okay. And then we've got the actual genes or features that they are located within. So if we click on one of these, double click, it will take you to that position. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can investigate at that position. We've got the insertions. These are positions of insertions. Again, if you click on it, it will take you to those positions. Okay. And these are the, the actual insertion and the occurrence account. Can, can you click here, you, you will, can you go back to the original sequence that, map? Yes, that's what you have yeah. So if you click, see if you've gone to mm -hmm. that position there. Yeah, so if we click on this one with 5455 ATA, we double click. It takes us there, and so it is five four five. Oh, five, I see. And you can see you've okay. got that insertion there. Okay, I see. You can actually it's click on here and investigate. It's just highlight the cursor here. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking at is always in the center. So you see the long vertical uh, rectangle in the center. That's the, the base you look at. So you're sort of focusing on the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got the same with deletions, so uh, these are deletions. Okay, we can't show that until we've got too long. Yes, yeah, so these other ones will show up only when you're doing the comparison between two different samples, the group differences. Okay. Uh, so, so far, how is it going, Andrew? Is it clear? Yeah, clear. Pretty, very comprehensive. It's, I think it's better than uh, integrative genome view. That's right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's much better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's better. Let me talk quickly. Let's not confuse at the moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of other that? things that we can show you, but it will mm -hmm. get too confusing if we add everything together. So at this stage, we're just here showing you a very basic how to look at the sequence data yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, do the SNP analysis. And if you want to compare two different sequences, how to do the group differences. Yeah. You can also, if you move over, we call this the analysis panel at the bottom. So if you want to export it to an image, you can export mm -hmm. analysis panel. Uh -huh. And you can save this as a PNG or a GIF, and these are the options. Oh, it's a image, right? A screenshot. Yes. That's uh, right. But it does the full okay. one. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I will do the full genome, the whole thing, okay. not just the screenshot. It'll oh, really? It's whole whole everything. Wow. But yes. I wouldn't try to do it with something two million bases. <laughs> yeah, so this is oh, good, you know, you've got 9,000 bases, or if you're just doing a gene or something, then this will work, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you're going into a single gene and then looking at individual genes for something which is a very large, you know, for 
example for mm -hmm. H. pylori, if you wanted to do, you wouldn't do the whole genome. Mm -hmm. You would go into individual genes and then you can generate these screenshots or the PDF files for that data. So this actually saves the content at the, the bottom. So if you've got 10 different groups, it would save all of them underneath each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can set base width. So you can make them bigger and smaller if you want to use it on a paper or you want to keep it smaller. Mm -hmm. And you can choose the positions so you can actually select the locations you want to save it for. So you don't have to, you can start from different nucleotide positions or amino acid positions. Okay, and you can add scales and... Uh, okay. So you want to do it for number Yeah, so let's just do the yeah, so let's just do the H pylori now where we'll just show you how to do the comparison between two different samples. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. so far what you've learned is uh, you know how to open a new project, how to load a reference sequence, and how to load the sequences. Yeah. And with the reference sequence, if you want to look at the data, you can go within particular gene and will load only the sequences which are within particular gene. And then you can do a consensus sequence, you can generate the SNP reports, and you can uh, choose what percentage of, uh, you know, uh, SNPs or cutoffs you are interested in. Okay, so if we select yeah. Play back to pylori. So this is with the H pylori data now. And you can see this is 1.6 million base count. Mm -hmm. So this will take a bit of a time to load the data, but uh, you will be able to see how to analyze the data from here. So this, if you see on the top, this is the big genome. Mm -hmm. So it's very huge as compared to the HIV. Yeah, so just much more genes, many more genes. Yeah. That's well, we'll correct. Lots of genes and coded sequences and how many genes do I have? Hundred. One thousand seven hundred and fifty-three. So if you look, oh, one thousand seven hundred. Yeah, and fifty. One thousand seven hundred coded sequences. So, so these are which what have been annotated within the gen file. Okay. Okay. And again, you can use this to go to that position. Go to these, or so if someone is interested in a particular gene and they want to look at just that mm -hmm. data, you can just go in from here onto yeah. that one. Well, also, you notice on you've got the light blue and the dark blue on the yeah. genes. You see the difference? Yeah, I see the difference in color. What I mean? Yeah, the darker blue is on the complement strand. And same with the yellow. So if you double click on the dark blue one, you're actually mm -hmm. going backwards along the complement strand. So the gene is being oh. coded in the opposite direction. Oh. So the complement strand is what's coding that gene. So you see the numbers actually going backwards here. Mm. But if you change it to the nucleotide, we're going forwards. And you can see as we move, we're going backwards along the genome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so as you use uh, the use the use of both strain to code protein. That's correct. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, and the same with the top one, the darker yellow is the complement. So if we import the BAM files, yeah. and show the include trim reads too. So here now we're going to load two different files so we can show you how to do the group differences. Yeah. And this takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. You probably also need to be on a computer with more with quite a bit of memory. 
and that's where doing it on you know that big computer in Simon's room is going to be useful because this probably will not work very well mm -hmm. on a desktop computer. Yeah, yeah. you're right. right. So how many sample you loaded? Three. So you loaded two, two. here now. Yeah. Oh, two. Okay. I think if we load in the twelve, it usually takes about maybe eight minutes to load them in, and it's using about sixteen gigabytes of memory. Mm -hmm. but the more memory, the faster, the better. But if you use this week as to analyze human data, that will take a long, long time. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. It takes a very, very long time. Yeah. It's probably not the length of time, it's the memory available. You need the memory to load it in. So it's having to clear memory all the time. Yes. Yeah, because human data usually is a gigabyte level, is much higher. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So can you put all the data in the hard drive and only when you use it, you swap in to the one? It's storing it in memory and... Uh, so you load everything to the memory? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah that would be very thirsty yeah, for, the, for the memory. For human, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this is good. That's why this at the moment is good for viral sequence data and you know I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Small genomes. For human you would be trouble, yeah. Small genomes, this is useful. You'd be okay with human if you it's all in one sequence, but if you've got thousands of reads, you know, maybe twenty or thirty fold, I don't know how much. If you've got ten sequences, I don't know. It's probably okay. I mean it's loaded this thing. And you've probably got 500 times, well, I think you've got 50,000 50, 50, times 2 million. So one human sequence <coughs> may be okay, okay, but if you're loaded in lots and lots with lots of reads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think even 10 or 20, but as long as you've got them, not, you know, yeah. lots of reads. Yeah, see, with the Illumina, normally with human genome, it's the, they're normally done on Illumina, so you'll have millions of reads, yeah. you'll have millions of reads, but you may not have coverage across the whole thing, you may have only two or three-fold coverage some places, yeah. but you're loading in millions of reads. Well, it will put them into three. Exactly. Three sequences, if there's only three-fold coverage, so right. it's not right. that much memory. Oh, okay. Okay, so now it's loaded that in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the sequences. So this was, uh, we did some sequencing for the H. pylori genome here for Professor Tim Covers from Vanderbilt. Oh, okay. And we, so we've, now, the data. we've put them into 88 rows and if you can see See the first ones, the first sample is fit into 34 rows, and the second one starts at row 35. Okay, so these are sequences from two different samples now. So and if you want to now look at the analysis, you can mm -hmm. go in and do the quality scores again. Yeah. Yeah. So it runs very smoothly. I mean, we're looking at two million bases times eighty-eight here, and it keeps it. Mm -hmm. How do you tell the difference? Of which one is a first sample? Which one is a second sample? Okay. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, down the left hand side, I'm going to put some sort of identifier there, but at the present we just don't... We have just have it. to hover over it and yeah. have a look. But as you hover over, you can see the first sample takes up the first 34 rows, and the second one... Oh, 
on the oh, your cursor show up. Okay, I see. Yeah. So you can see the cursor now 35. That underscore one means the first set of reads for the second sample. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so if we do the consensus again, oh, you also see these lowercase ones. Mm -hmm. Can you see these lowercase? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, know, I see the lowercase. What that, yeah. that suggest? So that is that these are the ones that have been trimmed off. So when we did the alignment, anything that was lowercase oh, is okay. being trimmed off from the analysis. It's not included in the, the analysis then. Yeah, and we can do that in the checks. Yeah. So the second icon, the tick, it's got a trimmed assembly read check. So it goes through and gives you an information about all the reads that have been trimmed and what was the length of the read that's been trimmed. It generates. Okay, so can you see this? Yeah, the window. Okay, so you see the group selection. These are the two reads. On the okay, top. 56 and the 67. Mm -hmm. I click one of these. These are the different trimmed reads. Okay. Uh, we can order by length count so this is how many times the actual trimmed read occurs position count. these are the different how many positions it occurs within so although the first one occurs 97 times it actually occurs at 95 different positions and this is the actual distance from the G the closest G This is a 419 base pair trim, so it's a large trim base. That means it didn't align very well to the region where it, you know, a portion of the read probably aligned, but then mm -hmm. the rest of the read didn't align and it was trimmed off. The, the top left, you can set these uh, values to cut down the search, so you can search between different lengths in different trim positions. But if you click on one or more of these, click display selection. Mm -hmm. Let me try. It should take you to that. It should. I'll have a look at that. It's something new, maybe it's just uh, yeah, it takes you to the. It, it should take you to that position, and then, then you can uh, investigate it. Mm -hmm. Click on it again. And what we need to do is within it. Yeah. I think that it should be okay. So you want something which is closest to the gene because that's where you know you could find and I think in edge file already that's where we found there's something it's probably there's some to do with the quality about. scores. I'm not testing that with the quality scores which we did yesterday. So uh, Okay. Yeah, so this will get back to you about that one. Okay, so the consensus. So see, now you can make two different groups. Okay. Yeah. And we'll set a cutoff of... 5%. This will take a few minutes if we're doing it with the full genome. Mm -hmm. 
but you can do this within the genes as well. So whatever you've got selected, if you're within a gene or a feature, then the consensus is generated for that. But at present, we're actually within the full genome, so it's going to generate a consensus for the full genome. Full genome. That's going to take a while. Yeah. Quite late for you there, Andrew. Uh, yeah, right now it's at ten o'clock. It's okay, no problem. How far are you from the university? Uh, about uh, twenty-five miles. Twenty-five miles. Mm. About an hour to go back home. Yeah, <laughs> oh it's okay. God. Don't worry. Do you have the way to change uh convert the read count right now? Just the absolute count, right? to the FPKM, something like that? What was that, sorry? Normalize, normalize the read count. Normalize? To FPKM. What is that? FPKM. That's the read per meaning base, uh, per meaning sequence, something like that. Just kind of human data always use that. Okay, so maybe we'll look into that. We'll have a look at that and see. Can you send me an email just with uh, just a few details and I'll investigate it? Okay, it's done, I think, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So now again, you can look at the coverage, you can look at the consensus. Mm -hmm. That's good. So they're, they're stuck up underneath. So they're both between one under the other. And now if you want to look at the group differences, highlight. So you see the highlight group difference? You can, if you've got three or four, you can do it between a selected sequence, or you can do it group wide. wide. Okay. Yeah, so it shows you anywhere where these two places are different, so it will take you through any place where these two sequences are different. So yeah, this is very useful if you're looking at yeah. longitudinal yeah. data. You know, you've got yeah. samples which are two different time points or something. Or cancer, you know, you normal versus tumor and you're looking at some sequence differences, this is a really good yeah. way to look at that. Yeah. yeah. And it works for both the amino acids and the and nucleotide. For nucleotide. Mm -hmm. And the differences are not just the counts, also the just the changes, isn't it? Yes, so you can ignore, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the changes. It's the changes, not, it's the, not the count. Not the count, yeah. So if you look now at the navigation report, which will take you a second to roll. So all this can be exported as an Excel, yep. or you can look at the navigation report. So everything that's shown on this navigation report will get exported in an Excel format. Andrew knows how to do that. Yeah, because it's going through the whole genome, it's going to take a bit of a time. Yeah, it's comparing the differences. Yeah. Should have done this just for a protein. Yeah. There. 
Okay, we've done it for the full genome, so there's a lot of data in here. Uh, and we didn't include the base score, uh, the quality scores, so we have no quality score information. But if we'd have clicked that button, we would have had the quality score information. Uh, okay, so you see the DNA group differences. Mm -hmm. These are all the positions where we have a difference between the two groups. Okay, so we've got the base position, the reference, and then in the third column, we've got the nucleotide differences. So in the first group, we've got a T, but in the second group, we have a TC. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. T means it's the same as the reference, right? That's right. It is, yeah. It doesn't have to be. We're, we're not interested in the reference. It's just mm -hmm. differences between the two groups. So you can see in the first group, we've got 100% Ts. But in the mm -hmm. second group, we have 95% Ts and 5% Cs. Oh, OK. This allows you to actually find where there's differences between different groups. Mm -hmm. And if you click on there, it takes you to that position. So you see the position where we've got a T and a TC. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we've got the same, f uh, th this is just the counts. Hmm. If you're actually within a these are also the genes that they're within. So you can actually see that they're within the DNA A gene. Mm. These are the coding sequences they're in and if they're within any features. Okay. Yeah, and if you were interested in this, then you could just go and click into the gene and then generate the report just by that one and you would see the coding protein group differences and group differences. So if we just clicked on that particular one. So now we've gone into the gene itself. So it's a lot quicker. So now you've got it for the just the DNA gene itself. Mm -hmm. And now you should be able to see the protein group differences so, there. Yeah, so these are the protein differences. Between the two different samples. So if you look at the proteins, you can see we have differences, a Q to a K and a Q. Yeah. Yep. yep. You can navigate to that position. So nav report is basically navigating to that report. And if you look at the export, it will export that into Excel format. An Excel format. Exactly the same thing. What you see in the nav report. So you can, I guess yeah. you can save it and then it'll go show you exactly what you're seeing in the nav report. So we've made three groups there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of things to do here and I'm sure by now, Andrew, you're confused. Mm -hmm. But till you test it out yourself and just have a play with the whole thing, you know, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions to ask once you have a play with it. Yeah, I need a time to play with it. Yeah. Yeah. 
you definitely need some time mm. to play with it. I think maybe playing, you're probably better getting used to it using something a little bit smaller than the H pylori. So maybe something like HIV, if we set you some mm -hmm. sequences. Yeah, 